Many creators behind lucrative computer programs are in their mid to late twenties and became million billionaires virtually overnight. These people popularly referred to as geeks are generally so absorbed in the computer world trying to come up with lucrative products that they end up pale and disheveled, wearing old blue jeans and coupled t-shirts while earning millions of dollars. This geek style is reinforced in magazines and television so that now geek is in style. The cyber industry professionals service the growing mass of alienated humans who for the most part have little or no voice in society. Overwhelmed by society and its rate of change and speed, increasing numbers of people search for and create their identity in virtual worlds. For many, the cybersphere is the one place that allows them a voice and control over their life. This represents the final stage in the evolution of mass mind into a highly atomized and divergent consciousness. At this stage, self-promotion is endemic whether anyone has anything to say or not. In these worlds, people become the fantasy of themselves. However, this is a necessary stage in the devolution of consciousness. This is not to discount the good and the true that use the internet as a tool to create a collective vibration of positive change on behalf of the planet, that at best, merges into global mind tribal fusion. But for the most part, internet websites are used as a forum and perpetuation of ego in its many forms. The internet represents both the evolution of human consciousness and the devolution of human consciousness. This is the stage of maximum divergence into myriads of individual egoic selves, each having his or her own space in virtual reality to show who they are by stating their opinions and posting pictures of themselves to project different images in hopes of attracting new virtual friends, etc. On the internet, people can sit behind their machines and voice opinions about various topics or say things about others that they would not dream of saying in person. With the massive increase in population, many people do not know where they fit or how they can make a difference. So they tattoo and pierce themselves and get a sight on MySpace to show everyone who they really are. Sociologically, this is the only response that many people have. Whether the technologies are manipulating them or not, most people are deviated so far from nature that they prefer to play a video game than take a walk in the park. The alienation from nature and infatuation with artificial society and virtual means is so profound that many humans now live inside the machine, and the machine lives inside them. Many computer magazines exist on the market today, and all contain a similar consciousness expressed by the writers. It seems there is no question to computer journalists that the only way of the future is through constant massive quantum technological change. From this point of view, we are now completely absorbed in the exponential rush of information technology chains that quantum leapfrog each other at dizzying rates of speed. Vision is reduced to infinitesimal nanofractal units as reality becomes increasingly digitalized. The following is an excerpt from Wired Magazine 2005, forecasting the future of the Internet. What will most surprise us is how dependent we will be on what the machine knows about us and about what we want to know. We already find it easier to Google something a second or a third time rather than remember it ourselves. The more we teach this megacomputer, the more it will assume responsibility for our knowing. It will become our memory. Then it will become our identity. In 2015, many people, when divorced from the machine, won't feel like themselves. As if they'd had a lobotomy. This was written by Kevin Kelly, Wired Magazine, August 2005. The revolution of information technology is so phenomenal that there is no way to assess the effects on human consciousness, 
except to view the statistic of proliferation of those logging on. This feeds the machine. It is exactly what the machine wants, to have all the people on it. More and more people spend increasing amounts of time on the machine. Of course, they see less of nature. The machine has absorbed the human psyche to the degree that experiencing nature seems almost unnatural. As technologies revolutionize themselves, they speed swiftly into the masses with the cell phone technology, television on the cell phone, digital camera on cell phones, etc. They filter into mass society at a phenomenally rapid rate. The cell phone epitomizes the continuing revolution in technology itself.